We will be starting the ceremony in just a few moments, but before we start, I have a few announcements. First, we ask that you remain seated during the procession this morning. This will allow everyone to have a better, unobstructed view of the graduates as they enter the gym. We've tried real hard to give you a good view of all the graduates during the ceremony today. And at different times in the ceremony, the graduates will actually process down each of the main aisles in the gym. So hopefully that will give you a good opportunity to take pictures. As a service to you and to our graduates, we have a professional photographer here today, John Fay, who will be taking photographs of the graduates as they receive their diplomas. You will be able to preview and purchase these photographs online at www.eventpix, that's E-V-E-N-T-P-I-X, Dot com. After the ceremony, the graduates will recess down the aisle and out the back door of the gymnasium, and then they will re-enter the lobby through the performing arts wing, where you can join them. In the case of an emergency, there are four exits in the gym, two in the front and two in the back. Also. There is no smoking allowed anywhere on school property by state law. There is additional seating available in the air-conditioned auditorium. And I'd just like to say hello to the folks in the auditorium. I was just there and greeted them personally. But I will tell you that they do have the best seats in the house. So if you would like to join them, you're perfectly welcome to do so. Finally, we invite you to join our graduates in the lobby and the cafeteria for a brief reception after the ceremony today. Once again, just as a reminder, please remain seated during the procession this morning. We will be getting started in just a few moments. Thank you.
It is my pleasure and my honor to welcome you all to Bow High School tonight commencement exercise. As a rule, I try not to begin essays or speeches with a dictionary definition, but today I felt was an exception. The trusted old Merriam-Webster defines graduation as the act of acceptance of an academic degree or diploma. Usually, I do not disagree with this memorable source, but I felt its meaning was limited. The definition needs amplification. Graduation is a celebration of our years of academic and social development. It is a recollection and acknowledgement of the hard work, friendships, and all of the little moments that we'll remember for the rest of our lives. Years of studying, plays, concerts, dances, and games have all led to this gratifying moment. As we, the graduating class of 2006, sit here watching our high school careers fade away, it is important that we share a moment to reflect and appreciate the enormity of our fine accomplishment. For today's graduation marks not only our passage from the halls of Bow High School, it is also a declaration of our commitment and effort. We are a class of individuals with a wide variety of talents. There is no one adjective to the final class. I will cite just a few. Driven. Academically, we have achieved so much at our school. Every one of us here has accumulated at least 24 Bow High School credits, and we've all completed our very own senior project. Successful. We have classmates who have excelled in every subject. We have future engineers, doctors, scientists, teachers, and business people among us. Intelligent. Members of our class had to go above and beyond what was expected to earn a, top, a spot in the top 50 class rank with no less than a 3.6 GPA. Academically, we have challenged each other and ourselves to reach our potential. Athletic. As athletes, many of us have achieved our goals. People have gone to state meets and tournaments and lettered in varsity sports. We have team captains, Falcon Award winners, players of the year, 1,000 point scorers, and several state champions among us. Poetic. We have talented poets who make ordinary discussion anything but ordinary. A member of our class has even been recognized on a national level for her talents. Melodious. We have drum majors and all state members. There are so many talented musicians and vocalists among us. This is evident as the band and chorus win competition after competition. Dramatic. Many of us have put our talents to work and been casted in our school plays and musicals. Some of us work backstage, making entire musicals run smoothly. Giving. We have volunteered at many organizations. We have raised and donated thousands of dollars for charities. We are caring, compassionate, helpful, and loving. This eclectic mix of people is what has made our high school days so interesting. When we stepped into this building four years ago, we were faced with nervous anticipation, as well as excitement, knowing that the demands of the upcoming four years would affect our future. Throughout these years, we learned more than just how to write a killer essay, how World War I started, and why we should despise geometry proofs. We learned about life, love, friendships, work ethic, and how to fulfill our potential. Often, these non-academic lessons seem more important than knowing the identity of the father of socialism. Our graduation marks the completion of our educational foundation on which we will build as we pursue college and careers. I am confident that whatever we do, we will make our contributions to the global society. The class of 2006 remains indefinable in my eyes. One sole word cannot encompass the numerous attributes that our classmates have to offer. Today, as we graduate from Bow High School, don't listen to the dictionary. Celebrate not only receiving your diploma, but all the fine accomplishments you have achieved along the way. I am grateful to have known and worked with all of you, and I thank you for the opportunity to lead our class throughout high school. Thank you also to our parents, relatives, and friends who have always been there and led us along the way. I want to sincerely thank all of our devoted faculty and administration who are instrumental in our success. A special thank you goes out to our principal, George Edwards, who will leave the school as we depart. Thanks for sticking around until we left, and sincerely, we wish you the best of luck at Bedford. Last but not least, we should thank each other. 
We gave each other a reason to drag ourselves out of bed every morning and made our days that much more enjoyable. Congratulations, Bow High School Class of 2006. We finally did it. Thank you. Good morning, members of the school board, Mrs. Holt, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished graduates of the class of 2006. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Bow High School and our ninth commencement ceremony. It is truly a privilege for me to have the opportunity to share a few thoughts with you and with the class of 2006. Today is a day to celebrate not only for the members of the class of 2006 seated before you, but it is also a time for all of us to give our heartfelt thanks to those who helped them accomplish this terrific feat. I'd like to start today by thanking some of the people who through their hard work and dedication made this commencement ceremony possible. First to our school secretaries, Mrs. Peggy Burkhardt, Mrs. Cecile Poisson, Mrs. Kathy LeClaire, and Mrs. Rose Bresnahan, for all the time they spent answering questions, making lists, giving advice, supporting our seniors and all of us for the past four years. To our building and ground staff who worked so hard to provide us with this beautiful setting for our graduation ceremony. To our educational assistants, food service workers, custodians, bus drivers, all who have provided immeasurable help to our students, but especially to our seniors. To Mr. Mativier and the award-winning Bow High School Band and Chorus for the wonderful music they are providing for us today. A special thank you goes to Mr. Mativier for helping us plan and set up our graduation ceremony. To our guidance team, Mrs. Colleen DeRusso and Mr. John Farise, our counselors, Mrs. Martha Ray, our registrar, and Mrs. Lisa Ransom, our dean of students, all of who, whom have helped our seniors navigate through high school and prepare for the future. They have done all this with a warmth and a friendship that has truly endeared them to our seniors. A ceremony like this does not happen by itself. It takes an enormous amount of work and coordination. I would ask you to please help me thank Mrs. Martha Ray, our graduation and awards ceremony coordinator. We would not be here this morning if it were not for the dedication and tireless efforts of some remarkable people. I'm referring to our staff, not only the staff here at Bow High School, but also the staff at Bow Memorial School and at the Bow Elementary School. I would ask the members of the class of 2006 and the audience to please join me in showing our appreciation for the teachers and all of their hard work. Seniors, 
My deepest and most sincere thanks goes out to Ms. Gay Longnecker. Thank you for everything you have done for me and for Bow High School. and received a full scholarship to the University of Oklahoma. The class has also its first appointment to the United States Military Academy. Josh Cody, West Point class of 2010. Class of 2006 also includes 30 members of the National Honor Society. 15 members of the class have grade point averages over a 4.0, and 60% of the class has a grade point average above a 3.0. 14 of our seniors successfully completed all of the competencies related to their vocational program and received certificates of completion at a ceremony held at Concord High School on May 31st. In their four years, this senior class has led Bow High School teams to 36 state championship competitions. Eight members of the class have been state champions in at least one individual athletic event, and three have reached the 1,000-point milestone in basketball. Eleven, Eleven seniors have been members of the New Hampshire All-State Band, Chorus, Orchestra, or Jazz Festival. And one of our seniors even wrote the words to our Bow High School fight song when she was in the third grade. <laughs> Countless times our band, chorus, and orchestra have received accolades for their performances in state, regional, and even international competitions. And students in our drama program have entertained us with a wide variety of performances. Our seniors led our Tournament of Knowledge team to a resounding victory over the other capital area high schools. And as has been mentioned already, one senior, Teal Van Dyke, placed second in the National Poetry Out Loud competition in Washington, D.C. A large percentage of our seniors leave Bow High School having taken one or more of the 15 college credit classes we offer, or participating in a dual enrollment program with a local college or university. Altogether, we have offered over 180 college credit opportunities this year at Bow High School. We also have some very creative seniors who have channeled their passion into incredible senior projects, like the senior who wrote, produced, and directed his own original play, or the one who provided comfort to dying patients and their families at the hospice house in Concord. Congratulations to our seniors on your exceptional high school career. Now I'd like to offer just a few thoughts to the graduating class of 2006. Having written and delivered 18 graduation speeches, I think I realize more than most where your minds are and what you're thinking about at this very moment. <laughs> Knowing this, I, will try, I always try very hard to compose a speech which will be short. I know I'm not doing too well on that part. 
but most importantly, we'll leave you with one or two ideas that, will, that you will hopefully remember for at least a few minutes after this ceremony is over. I had a few ideas and I started to write. Then I found out that your classmates, Heather and Emily, had chosen the same ideas as the topics of their speeches. But I always try to take things like this in stride. My first topic was change. Change is good. So I changed. <laughs> and I went on to my next idea, which was don't be paralyzed by the fear of failure. But that idea was taken also. By this point, I could have become frustrated by losing my ideas, but I wasn't. I believe that Heather and Emily were just part of a bigger plan to get me to the topic that I was supposed to talk about all along. I know that this may come as a surprise to some of you, but there is actually one final test that you must take in order to receive your diploma today. I know the whole thing about seniors, no final exams, well, this isn't really a final exam. Please do not shout out the answers and do not raise your hand. Just think about the answers to these questions. Name the five wealthiest people in the United States. Name the last five Heisman Trophy winners. Name 10 people who have won a Pulitzer or Nobel Prize. Name the last five vice presidents of the United States. Name the last half dozen Academy Award winners for either Best Actor or Best Actress. Name the last decade's worth of World Series winners. How'd you do? The point is, none of us remembers the headliners of yesterday. These are no second-rate achievers. They are the best in their fields. But the applause dies, awards tarnish, achievements are forgotten, accolades and certificates are buried with their owners. Now here's another quiz. See how you do on this one. List five teachers who aided your journey through school. Name three friends who have helped you through a difficult time. Name five people who have taught you something worthwhile. Think of a few people who have made you feel appreciated and special. Think of five people you enjoy spending time with. Name a half dozen heroes whose stories have inspired you. Easier? So what's the point? The people who make a difference in your lives are not the ones with the most credentials the most money, or the most awards. They are the ones who are nice people and who have demonstrated a positive, caring attitude. Charles Swindell, in his poem entitled Attitude, writes, the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Attitude to me is more important than facts, more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than successes, than what other people think or say or do. It is more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. It will make or break a company, a church, a home, a school. The remarkable thing is that we have a choice every day regarding our attitude. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on the one string we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. You are in charge.
of your attitude. You have earned your high school diploma. You have learned most of the things that our nation, our state, and our town has determined you must. You have been born into privilege, the privilege of going to a great school, living in a safe and beautiful state, in the greatest and most affluent country in the world. Now you must decide what to do with all that you have. Will you hoard it and keep it all to yourself? Or will you share it with others, many less fortunate than you, and share it with a generous, happy heart? Former Notre Dame football coach Lou Holtz said, ability is what you're capable of doing. Motivation determines what you do. Attitude determines how well you do it. Have a positive attitude. Share the gifts you have earned and have been given. Share them freely and with a generous heart. Don't just give what you have, but give of yourself. In the book, The Prophet, the author Khalil Gibran writes, you give little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give. He continues, there are those who give little of the much which they have, and they give it for the recognition. And their hidden desire makes their gift unwholesome. And then there are those who have little and give it all. These are the believers in life and the bounty of life, and their coffers are never empty. Students at Bow High School demonstrate this on a daily basis, whether it is saying good morning or thank you, holding the door open for a total stranger, helping a student with classwork, or contributing to a classmate getting made on a reality TV show. So you might be asking, what is my one idea? Yeah, I know, it's really two, but they're related, so I'm counting them as one. Hopefully, I've gotten your attention with them, and you will remember them for more than the few minutes we are here today. It is the importance of being a nice person and having a positive attitude. Being smart, graduating from the best school on the planet, early of course, and with plenty of honors classes. Getting terrific, high paying jobs in the right field. Marrying that trophy husband or wife having the big bank account with a stock portfolio. Society tells us that all of these are great things, but they mean nothing if you are not a nice person and if you don't have a positive attitude. So how did you do on the first set of questions? How about the second? I hope, I hope that you will always be someone's answer to the second set of questions. Congratulations to the class of 2006. Good luck in all you do. Have a safe and happy summer. And remember, always try to be nice and have a positive attitude. It will be the answer that will make a lasting impression. Thank you very much.
morning. <laughs> Superintendent Holt, Principal Edwards, Assistant Principal Longnecker, Dean Ransom, parents, family, friends, and the class of 2006. When Julie asked if I would speak at your graduation, I hesitated in saying yes, not because I didn't cherish the thought of addressing you one last time, but quite simply, the invitation overwhelmed me. You have done great things these past four years. Your presence in these halls, in this gym, and on our fields will be greatly missed. Thank you, class, for this tremendous honor. So here we all are, and the question begs, what is it that you, the class of 2006, have left behind? What is it that you will be remembered for? What is your legacy? Julie had her own list of adjectives to describe this class. I dug deep, and I actually went around and asked people myself. So class of 2006, here is how the Bow community answered the question, describe the class of 2006 in one word or one phrase. And here is what they said. The class of 2006 is very individualistic, fiercely competitive, very loyal to each other. The class of 2006 is an awesome class. You are close. One member of this class even has a special handshake with every member. And if you happen to not have your special handshake, I think you will by the end of this ceremony. You are a class that is welcoming, a class that does not ignore anyone. You are a class of personalities. There's a commonality among these reflections which celebrate your lives, and they speak well of who you are and what you have done for this community. You found the best in each other, you challenged each other, and you accepted each other. Looking ahead to your futures is exciting. Looking back over your past four years can be a time of bittersweet reflection and cause for serious and genuine honesty and evaluation of choices you have made. And for some of you, choices you have not made. Don't agonize over things you did do or things you didn't do that you regret. Life is short, class of 2006. Choose your condition, choose your attitude, choose how you want other people to see you, and enjoy always the possibility of each moment. Class of 2006, you have reached out, and that is a very important testament to your awareness that to whom much has been given, much shall be expected. And about this given part, at some point today and tomorrow, and the tomorrow after tomorrow, be grateful. Thank those who helped you get here today. Thank your parents. Thank your siblings. Thank your grandparents, your extended families. Thank your friends. Thank your teachers. You are all who you are, and you are all here today because some others chose to help you get to this moment. On this, a very important day in your lives, we celebrate all that you are and all that we hope for you. And for what it's worth, I'd like to offer some thoughts, three, if you're counting, that I hope will help you on your journeys to tomorrow. The first thought is a rather unfortunate story set in the mid-17th century. That's the 1600s, Cal, and don't sit this one out. The story focuses around some explorers who, referencing maps of noted cartographers of the time, ventured up the coast of California, a place drawn as an island that lay miles from the lands we now know as Nevada, Utah, Idaho. 
And these explorers, upon reaching the shores of California, painstakingly disassembled their ships and carried their boards, planks, and ropes, among other things, across miles of expanse, over mountain ranges, through the valleys, and across open plains, only to find that California was indeed not an island, but that it was, in fact, a landmass attached to the mainland. Now, this story would be rather amusing except for one small detail. When these explorers sent word back to the cartographers in their distant European lands that they needed to change their maps, no one believed them. These map makers refused to change the maps, and so for another 100 years, California remained falsely an island, all because a group of cartographers remained too content in their own knowledge, too rigid in what they knew to be true, and too comfortable working with partial information. Class of 2006, vision is the ability to realize that the truth is always larger than the partial present. Be relentless in your search of that truth Choose to know all the sides before you rush to judgment. Be open and willing to accept the ideas and discoveries of others, even though they may not be your own. Like the explorers along the coast of California, be daring in your pursuit to know whether others agree with you or not. Nothing good ever comes of assuming you know the whole truth. The second thought is another story about the British statesman Winston Churchill. In 1940, the British secret intelligence succeeded in breaking the German code. And on November 14th of that same year, Prime Minister Churchill was faced with a difficult decision. The British city of Coventry, a heavy populated city 90 miles north of London, a city known for its historical, architectural, and industrial fineries, would be bombed by German planes. If Churchill chose to warn the citizens of Coventry, the Germans would know the British had intercepted their message, potentially leading to more atrocities and loss of life. If, however, Churchill chose not to warn the citizens of Coventry, then hundreds, perhaps thousands, would be killed. Churchill chose not to warn the citizens of Coventry, and in the aftermath, 400 people were killed, thousands left homeless, and a city lay decimated. My point in telling you this story is not to enter into a discussion of the philosophical explanations or historical implications of Churchill's decision. No. My point in telling you this story is for you to grasp that knowledge is power, but sometimes knowledge of the truth is not enough. Enter the moral compass. How you choose to use your knowledge will be even more powerful than the acquisition of knowing. Churchill made a decision based on a discovery that became his body of knowledge, and his decision affected countless thousands, even millions. Here at Bow High School, 3,269 miles from London, England, we have tried to provide you with the means to acquire knowledge and make good decisions. Knowledge alone will not measure your life. All the biology classes can still not definitively detail the complexities and the intricacies of human life. All the language classes can still not adequately prepare you for the astounding miscommunications that occur in this world and all the history classes cannot easily explain the plight of countries that suffer from cyclical violence. Whether you are Prime Minister of England or citizen of Bow, New Hampshire, each of you every day uses your knowledge to make decisions that affect countless others. Use your knowledge to do noble things. Find a cure for cancer and find it quickly. Use your knowledge to eradicate the symptoms associated with acute
respiratory syndrome, Alzheimer's disease. Use your knowledge to educate and eliminate voter apathy. Use your knowledge and choose to end what some call stupid poverty. The poverty in our world that can be eliminated but is not for reasons that transcend moral comprehension. And finally, class of 2006, in this age of global interdependence, work to cultivate what Illinois Senator Barack Obama calls a culture of empathy. See life from another person's perspective. Walk in another person's shoes for a day. Look out for each other. Look out for people. The poor of the world are not always poor because they deserve it or because they are lazy. The hungry are not always hungry because they have spent their money frivolously. People are not always lonely because they didn't spend enough time cultivating lasting friendships. In this world of plenty and in this country steeped in living the American dream, life is not always as it ought to be. The easiest thing in the world is to focus on your own dreams and your own desires. To open the newspaper to the sports section or crazily enough, the Daily Wonder Word. It is easy to overlook headlines that document global warming, child prostitution, Darfur, Iraq, AIDS. It is easy to ignore it away as someone else's problem, a problem that someone else can take care of and fix. But do not do the easy thing, class of 2006. Choose the more difficult course of action. Be the leaders. I will always remember you for the selfless things you did in your four years here. Things where you received no championship medals, no accolades, and even no mention on the coveted prize spot on the BHS Morning News with Max and Sini. <laughs> Class of 2006, continue to cultivate that culture of empathy. Locks of love, Habitat for Humanity, Make-A-Wish Foundation, the New Hampshire chapter of the Special Olympics, New Hampshire hospice, local food banks, Somalian and Sudanese refugees, victims of Hurricane Katrina and Rita, Native Americans on reservations, and students at the Bow Elementary and Bow Middle Schools are all better because of your commitment to step outside your comfortable worlds and make the decision to help someone else. You chose the difficult. You chose to not turn the other way. It is the paradox of life that the more you give, the more you receive. To whom much has been given, much shall be expected. You are generation millennia. You are the generation of iPods and handheld electronics, of IM and email. You are the most technologically savvy in a country whose history has been rooted in the inventive spirit. You have more, you know more, you have the means to do more. But will it be enough for your children, for your children's children? Class of 2006, learn well the lessons of the explorers in California and be ready to always strive to seek to find and not to yield in your pursuit of what is true. Weigh heavily choices that demand you ask and act upon the question, what is the greatest good? And finally, cultivate that culture of empathy. 525,600 minutes, class of 2006, times four. How do you measure a life? The diploma you're about to receive is now your instrument. Go forth and build something with it. This is the time for bold measures, and you are the generation. Do great things, class of 2006. Good luck and Godspeed.
Welcome, teachers, families, friends, and classmates. Congratulations to you all. Today is a day we've anticipated for the past four years, the culmination of our high school career. Class of 2006, we are here today to celebrate our achievements in academics, athletics, and the arts. And with these achievements, we must remember how we accomplished our goals. We were successful by allowing ourselves to make mistakes and to fail along the way. In the past four years, we all have experienced a time when a mistake was made only to discover that the final outcome was beneficial. For some, it was missing the goal at practice countless times to perfect the shot that crossed the line in the game. Others hoped to be chosen for the lead role and instead received a small supporting part. Over time, realizing that the importance was in the experience of being a part of the production and not the star. Still, others struggled learning to drive, letting their nerves get the best of them. Missing the stop sign or running the red light resulted in failing that driver's test. However, through failure, we became more dedicated and worked harder. We became better, safer drivers and reached the milestone all teenagers crave. Failures cause us to question ourselves and our abilities. Feelings of self-doubt cloud our confidence. It is not easy to fight off feelings of failure, but it is essential to move forward and grow. We've all experienced a time when failure has led to success. 
One of my most memorable experiences came at the end of my sophomore year, the day National Honor Society decision letters arrived at home. As I opened the envelope, I was filled with excitement. Then I read the letter. I had been rejected. I was extremely disappointed. It was the first time I felt that I had failed academically. School had always been the area in which I felt most confident, and now that confidence was wavering. After a few tears and some recovery time, I realized I had two choices. I could give up bitterly and not reapply, or I could move on and work towards improving my application for the following year. I chose the latter. I spent the next school year working to enhance the area of leadership. And although failing at first, through determination, I was inducted into the National Honor Society in the spring of my junior year. While a rejection from NHS or a failed driver's test may seem trivial today, in the moment they were difficult to accept. Failure challenges us to self-reflect, to know ourselves better. As we mature in years, our mistakes and failures will increase in consequence. The small failures of today will prepare us for the greater ones to come. Our failures, what we learn from them, and the path we choose as a result will help us to build our character and to see our reflection more clearly. As we leave here today and begin our lives beyond the small world of Bohai, I wish you all the best of luck. We can be inspired by the words of someone a bit worldlier than I, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Take risks, make mistakes, don't be afraid to fail and be ready to tell us the stories at our reunions. Thank you all and congratulations again. Good morning, school board, administration, faculty, parents, guests, and classmates. Class of 2006, we did it. High school is finally over. It's funny to think that we're graduating when it seems like yesterday was the first day of elementary school. We have all been together for so long, it's going to be almost impossible to say goodbye. But we are here today to celebrate the end of one part of our lives and the beginning of another. We are experiencing one of the most significant changes of our lives. Throughout our school years, we have grown accustomed to the inevitability of change and the uncertainty that it brings. When I transitioned from kindergarten to first grade, I cried every single day for a week because I missed my mom. My cool light up sneakers did not make up for the fact that I was away from my family and surrounded by people I didn't know. Though this change seemed insurmountable, I learned to love elementary school. Just as I was feeling comfortable learning my ABCs, middle school came along. I didn't want to have to make a change again, but I didn't cry during the first days of middle school. And as the years wore on, I noticed my priorities were shifting. I couldn't wait to be asked the semi-formal dances and to hang out with my friends. Free time became a chance to gossip rather than to play tag. Another four years flew by, and before I knew it, high school loomed on the horizon. There was definitely no recess in high school, and the work was going to be more challenging. I may have been a little excited for the french fries, but I felt nervous again and petrified of the big kids. After I conquered my fears, High school became the place where I made my closest friends, met my favorite teachers, and created some of my most cherished memories. Looking back, the changes that we endured have had a significant impact on our lives. Some of the transitions have been scary or nerve-wracking, but they have turned out for the best. Change can be a frightening aspect of life, but we must embrace it or fear that nothing will progress. Imagine if nothing ever changed. We'd all still be in middle school having to take one of those hugely awkward hall passes every time we had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> French author Anatole France once said, 
All changes, even the most longed for, have their melancholy. For what we leave behind is a part of ourselves. I have found that at each stage of my life, after the initial adjustment, I was certain of my place in the world. Now, on the cusp of a new stage in our lives, it is with mixed emotions that we graduate. We have to remind ourselves what the changes in our lives have taught us. It's too easy to lay back and fail to question who we are and what we want. Significant change challenges us to look at the direction that our lives are headed and inspires us to make our lives what we want them to be. Huge change is an opportunity to discover yourself outside of the place you have always known. Take all you have learned and cherish the memories you have made, but do not dwell on the past. As John F. Kennedy said, change is the law of life, and those who look only to the past or present are certain to miss the future. Congratulations, class of 2006. I wish you all the best of luck. Embrace change and live life as you've always dreamed. Thank you. And now for the presentation of diplomas. Assisting me will be Assistant Principal Gay Longnecker and members of the Bow School Board. Julie Ann Sarapak. Matthew Conrad Card. Jason Henry Lewis. Brittany Anna Phelps. Sarah Elizabeth Hartley. <laughs> Heather Lee Lothrop. <laughs> Emily Catherine Ann Samaha. Caitlin Rose Abbott. Christy Ann Eggcorn. Gretchen Rebecca Andrus. Sarah Beth Argyropoulos. <laughs> Allison Ruth Bartlett. <laughs> Ashley Therese Bean. <laughs> Kristen Lane Beck. Casey Ann Bissett. <laughs> Taryn Marie Botcher. <laughs> Eric Benjamin Bouchard. <laughs> Patricia Lynn Brewster. <laughs> Heather Barbara Brock. <laughs> Gabby.
Jeffrey W. Brunel. Jennifer Karen Buteman. Max Nolan Cantor. Jennifer Paige Carson. Jeffrey Thomas Shagnon. Jacqueline Lilla Chambers. Michael Richard Churgi. Paul Thomas Churgi. Sean William Smar. Whitney Ann Cookson. Joshua John Cody. Jessica Lee Kudo. David Anthony Kucher. Jonathan Troy Crapo. <laughs> Tiffany Larissa Cronin. <laughs> Brian Robert Cummings. Garen Mark Curtin. <laughs> Megan Dara. <laughs> Mitchell Allen Davis. Allison Kate DeStefano. <laughs> Jacob Copeland Eaton. <laughs> Jonathan Patrick Eads. Christine Lee Eldridge. <laughs> Rebecca Marie Erdahl. <laughs> Zachary Levitt Eskelin. Caitlin Louise Fellows. <laughs> Brianna Lee Finnegan. <laughs> Sarah Elizabeth Foy.
Jason Jerome Frazier. Laura Hamilton Fries. Kevin Andrew Frolix. Daniel Henry Frost. Sean Joseph Gallarani. Connor Timothy Galvin. Christine Lynn Garbach. Paul Albert Gelly. Jonathan Ronald Gerard. Jonathan Richard Golden. Caroline Mariella Gould. Elizabeth Louise Gould. Timothy David Graff. William Vicent Gunn III. Dwyer Cole Haney. Bridget Maureen Halbrick. Thomas Zachary Henry. Laura Elizabeth Hurlihy. Tess Morgan Hibbert. <laughs> Amelia Lovering Holsworth. <laughs> Brittany Marie Hooper. Kyle Andrew Horner. Samuel Thomas Noel Ives. Marissa Sue Jewell. Madeline Lane Keys. Tracy Ann Klotz. Christopher William Contos. Melody S. LaPlante.
Amanda Elise Lamb. Justin William Lamprey. Robert Joseph Lowers. Kevin James Leach. Sean Patrick Leahy. Paul G. Lennon, Jr. Aaron William Limoges. Nicole Kathleen Lazat. Ryan James Lowe. Caitlin Marion Lundquist. Adam Nicholas Manolis. Nicholas Harmon Marks. Jeffrey Lewis Martin. Callie Suzanne McCartney. Sean Peter McManus. Catherine Beth McMicken. Sean L. McQuarrie. Sarah Beth Metzger. Tracy Margaret Moltisanti. Jennifer Catherine Monahan. Laura Beth Mooney. Kevin Michael Morris. Molly Nolette Morrow. Kristen A. Mosier. Stephen Kyle Mulherin. Tracy Marie Murphy. Corey Ryan Nachman. Caitlin Rose Nurbon. Christopher David Noyes. Daniel P. Nugent. Laura 
Emily Obowitz. Jarek J. Ostrowski. James John Ovidy III. Emily Lauren Patch. James Francis Pelton III. Emily Grove Perkins. Aaron Earl Finney. Sarah Amelia Pike. Elizabeth Angel Florid. Kevin Daniel Preston. Christopher Thurston Remillard. Jordan Hathaway Reynolds. Emily Taylor Ryder. Francisco B. Reardon. Alyssa A. Rowe. Davis Ford Saltmarsh. Michael Anthony Sasso. Samantha Jo Seneschal. Garrett Edward Sini. Vinitra Sharma. Tessa Demobie Shea. Jeffrey D. Sabolkin. Alex Sierra. Ryan Michael Simpson. Allison Harriman Smith. Benjamin J. Somberg. Maria Alice Sewell. Chelsea Lauren Elizabeth Stidwell. Benjamin Roy Stremfer. Chanticleer Esprit Sweat. (laughs) 
Jonathan Paul Telgener. Melanie Kealani Titus. Jake Lawrence Valance. Teal Gretchen Van Dyke. Victor J. Villardo. Stephen Gavin Wolf. Scott Willis Woodbury. Kyle Everett Worth. Eric Thomas Worthington. It is truly my pleasure, on behalf of the faculty and administration of Bow High School, I certify that the members of the class of 2006 have met all of the requirements for graduation of the Bow School District and of the state of New Hampshire. Congratulations. Class of 2006, turn your tassels. 